اليوم about left main PCI هلا ما راح ندخل بتفاصيل الداتا وي ديسكاس ذات ان ا ديفرنت فورمات اليوم راح نركز مور اباوت تكنيكاليتيز اوف ليفت مين ديزيز فالتكنيكال كونسيدريشن اوف ان بروتكتد ليفت مين ما نحكيش عن بروتكتد ليفت مين مريض عنده ليما ولا عنده اس في جي ولا شغله زي هاي وي ار توكينج اباوت ان بروتكتد ليفت مين ديزيز اند وي كان توك اباوت ذا تكنيكال ايشوز هير First technical issue I will talk about proper diagnosis. بعد مرات بيجيك قراءة كتيرة بقول لك هذا عنده left main disease تطلع على الموضوع بتصير عندك شكوك. طبعا because left main is really crucial to diagnose we have few things to mention here. الشغلة الثانية I will talk about stent strategy or PCI strategy percutaneous coronary intervention strategies. ما راح يكون عندنا وقت definitely for imaging guidance or staging. or hemodynamic support يمكن هدول بدهم محاضرة لحالهم uh, in general فخلينا نحكي عن proper diagnosis of unprotected left main disease في عنا osteal disease sometimes we are faced with a spasm sometimes we are faced with artifacts like bends or abnormal origin or extreme angulation sometimes we are faced with dissection that looks like a stenosis. So these are very important to diagnose because they have uh, clinical implications in general. At the same time, we have useful techniques. Iorthography are helpful sometimes in osteal left main disease. Non-selective imaging are always helpful in, in, in osteal left main disease. IVAS, of course, is valuable. However, the cost uh, consideration is extremely important. And FFR is also helpful. So we'll talk about few of these things uh, to cover uh, important issues and hopefully we'll show you some cases. Distal left main lesion. كتير من الحالات بيجيك distal left main lesion بقول لك عندك tight stenosis بتكونش really the disease. بتكون tapering. بعض الحالات بيكون extreme tapering of the left main ending up with uh, LAD and uh, left circumflex. And sometimes you cannot differentiate it between left main atherosclerosis and proper tapering of the disease. So had all the things are Angulation sometimes give us extreme uh, unsatisfactory imaging and that looks like a severe disease of the bifurcation. And it's extremely important to diagnose those because 80% of the left main is in fact is involving the distal bifurcation of the left main. So it is extremely important to have a proper diagnosis of the left main disease. Useful techniques, orthography is not usually helpful in these cases, but various views, uh, special views, sometimes they are helpful. Uh, FFR and IVAS are sometimes a gold standard in the diagnosis. So uh, keep, keep in mind that not all distal left main tapering are disease. It could be just uh, normal uh, tapering of the, the vessel itself. Let's talk about uh, PCI strategies here. We'll talk about in details and tips and tricks sometimes. We'll talk about wiring. We'll talk about lesion preparation. We'll address the stent position uh, in these cases and bifurcation strategies. These are the important issues that I will uh, talk today. It's extremely important to elaborate more on, on these subjects, but uh, We'll try to cover as much as we can today. So these are uh, updated guidelines of 2018, looking at the wiring techniques of left main, particularly when you have bifurcation uh, of the left main. Green should be done. Yellow is preferable. Red should not be done or should be avoided. So this is the first wiring issues here. Upfront side branch wiring is recommended in true bifurcation if difficult rewiring is anticipated. If you have disease of the side branch, you should wire it. If you anticipate that you cannot wire the side branch after proper main branch disease, you should wire it. Now, wiring only main branch may be useful if side branch angle is favorable and no severe side branch disease. If the side branch is free of significant disease and the angle is favorable, you are not obligated to wire it before you treat your main branch and the LED. Now, this is extremely important. Look at this. It is very difficult. Access is difficult. Only main branch wiring is not recommended if side branch severely diseased 
or unfavorable angulation. So red line. It will tell you how to treat the main branch, and then you can enter the side branch when you have severe angulation and difficult wiring and severe disease. No, no, this is a C classification. So these are the wiring issues of the left main, particularly bifurcation. You can treat main branch only when the side branch has favorable angle and free of significant disease. Once you have severe disease or unfavorable angulation or difficult wiring, you should wire both the main branch and the side branch. Lesion preparation. Left main lesions, in general, they are more calcified, my more fibrous, they are resistant to ballooning, and they have greater angulation. The angulation, we'll talk about angulation, the importance of the angulation of the left main and bifurcation. So in general, good lesion preparation is essential and very important in these cases. What we can do with lesion preparation? We usually use high pressure non-compliant balloons. Does it mean that you cannot use non-compliant balloons, but uh, a compliant balloon or semi-compliant balloons, but it's preferable to use non-compliant balloons because of the angulation and because of the fibrosis and the resistant lesions in general. And particularly in left main, you don't want to use a trying balloon and then use a different balloon. Patients, they can get hemodynamic compromise, they get hypotension, they get ischemia, and if that happens, it's really a too late uh, strategy. So use your best strategy up front. If you think that the patient will not dilate with the same compliant balloon, just use the non-compliant balloon. If you think the patient will not really be dilatable with balloons, go to the next level of preparation. Next level could be cutting balloons, could be scoring balloons. There are very limited availability in Jordan, so we don't usually address those uh, a lot. But some cases, they need rotational atherectomy. And lift main rotational atherectomy is extremely hazardous, extremely sensitive, because no reflow. Patients, they get hemodynamic compromise. They can go into hypotension, severe ischemia. So you have to be really fast and accurate and up to the point in rotational atherectomy of unprotected left main disease. I will show you hopefully some examples. Now going back to the updated recommendations, pre-dilatation, as we mentioned, green should be done, yellow preferable, and red should not be done and should be avoided. This is pre-dilatation, main branch pre-dilatation for facilitated, facilitation of the optimal main branch stent expansion and opposition. You should always, unless there is a specific cases, do pre-dilatation of the main branch. Now, side branch pre-dilatation, if side branch flow is impaired, access is difficult, and in presence of severe calcified lesion. You don't always do side branch pre-dilatation on preparation. You do it when you have severe disease, when you have difficult angulation, when you have compromised blood flow, and so forth. Same time, no routine side branch pre-dilatation is required in provisional stenting and no main branch pre-dilatation. If soft plaque is expected, you just go ahead with the main branch dilatation or direct stenting. So not always you do main side branch pre-dilatation, you do it in the specific indication. Now the red should not be done, you should not redilate the side branch with the same main branch balloon if the side branch size is as much smaller than the main branch. If they are comparable in size, you can use it, but if the side branch is smaller, you should avoid it because this is where you can ask for trouble. You have a main branch problem that you dilated, you have a side branch and you dilate excessively, you may end up with perforation, you may end up with dissection, so you really need more time to do the left main, and at that, that the time, will end up with hemodynamic problem, ischemia, ventricular fibrillation, and so forth. So use proper sizing of the side branch. Don't use, don't be. Sometimes we want just to get things done, and you rush into using a larger balloon, and this is really serious and problematic. So these are the preparation issues here. Okay, Side branch is a CERC. Most of these side branch is a CERC. In selected few cases, the side branch is the LED. But most of this is the side branch is the CERC. 
Let's talk about STEM strategies. If there is a question, we are going to ask them. Our goal is not to create a discussion, but there are some situations, some of the things we will mention. About STEM strategy. Austrian. Yes. يعني حبيت ما ادخلش بالموضوع هذا لانه اتس ريلي انذر توك ان بارتيكولر بس ترايفوركيشن از اكستريملي از ا يوزفول وي هاف سبيسيفيك داتا اباوت ترايفوركيشن مصطفى بيعرف عن بعض الحالات وي شيرد سم اوف ذا ديسكشن ات ذا يورو بي سي ار لاست ماي اباوت ترايفوركيشن ليفت مين ديزيز And it's usually very helpful to approach it in a systematic and scientific way. That's the only thing we're going to focus on: the bifurcation and the left main. Osteal and shaft lesions. Single drug eluting stent usually is the main purpose of just shaft and osteal left main disease. Careful stent emplacement. Placement. A lot of times I see left mains are placed improper because if you have an osteal lesion, you have really to cover the osteum properly. And sometimes specific views can help you to do that. And once you have the stent is really moving with the beating heart, you have to use some specific techniques to avoid that jumping of the stent. Careful views, iliocranial, always use it. Hatta lo bedakshit sawi deployment during that phase or on that view, use it because sometimes it's uncover some un improper placement of the osteal stent. Stop mid-respiration. Deep breath. When I have deep breath, the movement sometimes is very difficult to control. The patient cannot really keep his deep breath in. Halfway and stop your breathing. It's usually helpful to stop the motion artifact. And if you have really difficulty and jumping stent during the angiogram, use pacemaker. You'll use the pacemaker, you put it at 120, 130 uh, beats per minute, and you deploy during the pacemaker. Other techniques, they are useful. You sometimes use, use intracoronary or adenosine. You stop the heart for a few seconds and deploy it. These are the techniques sometimes are extremely helpful when you have really cannot control the proper placement during the cardiac cycle. And a few technique was to rapid inflation without the, uh, but you have to be synchronous. You synchronize your thinking and your motion with the cardiac cycle. It needs some training, but it is sometimes helpful. When you think they are in the proper cycle, you just uh, push the uh, inflator all the way and it will stick. It, it, it is, it's helpful, but I think these are the issues that you can use at the beginning. Stop mid respiration, rapid pacing, intracoronary or uh, adenosine, and that will be helpful. Now, reaching the ostium is extremely important. When you have true osteal lesion, we always say you have to have a minor protrusion of the stent into the aorta. Get one strut outside into the aorta, because that will ensure that you cover the ostium. Now, when you have not, the ostium is not perpendicular, you have to at least cover the shorter segment of the left main. So one segment will be exactly at the border, and the other will be protruding a little bit more. So these are the things to really ensure that you cover the ostium of the left main and you have pro proper flaring of the ostium. When you have true ostium, we always go with a proper flaring. Your balloon, you pull it back a few millimeters and you go very high pressure. If you still think that you can need a better uh, flare up, you use a larger balloon at lower pressure because the stent that's in the aorta, it will dilate immediately. It has no resistance. If you use a larger balloon, the initial response will be the flare up of the segment that it is in the aorta, and that will give you proper flare up, easier access in the future, and better uh, or less restenosis. Hadola hakena hum ala al osteal wa ala al mid shaft. Inna nihki ala bifurcation. Bifurcation of the left main is extremely important to understand the sizing. There are many formulas that are really can give you an idea about the size of the left main comparable to the LAD and the left circumflex. If you take these formulas, 
Maurice Law, the left main to the power of three equals LED to the power of three plus the left circumflex to the power of three. If you use this formula, left main to the power seventh over three equals D2 seventh over three and D3. But the easiest formula is Finet's formula. Finet's formula is like D1 in the left main equals LAD plus left circumflex multiplied by 0.678. Insel 0.678 by 0.7. خلينا نحكي إنه مثلاً ال LED is four, the circumflex the LED is four, the circumflex ثلاثة. أربعة زائد ثلاثة سبعة multiplied by point seven بيطلع ال F main five. So it is the easiest formula, and I usually use this formula. So these are some helpful guidelines to give you an idea about the left main. بعد مرات بيجين ال left main three millimeter, وال LED four. It is diffusely diseased. You know it's diffusely diseased. It's not really truly three millimeter the left main. So these are the issues that can help. The bifurcation angle, more angulation with the left main, and it is important to understand and to know the consequences and significance. The angle between the LED and the diagonal is usually less than 60 degrees. However, the angle between the left circumflex, the left main and left circumflex is usually more than 60 degrees. Keep that up, clinical significance or not. I'll tell you some of the clinical significance of this wide angle. Why is bifurcation angle is so important? That we could state radial stent radial strength limits flexibility and therefore comfortability of the angle. I mean, you have the angle wide, but the radial strength is extremely important, and radial strength can limit the flexibility of the stent itself. Areas of low shear stress promote restenosis. I mean, you have the angle wider, shear stress is higher. The risk of restenosis is even higher. And finally, metal fatigue with greater articulation promotes struts fracture. Tariff, you know, area of the left circumflex in particular to the left main, it is very mobile. So this is really promotes strut fracture, and this will lead to complications, particularly restenosis, stent thrombosis, and so forth. So Hadola Shaglati Mohemme Bil angulation is extremely important to properly do PCI. Yani PCI of the left main is an art, as everything else, but it has a special art. Because if the patient comes back with a stent thrombosis of this, he's dead. If he comes back with restenosis, you know, it's extremely difficult to solve. So it's not just putting stents and that's it. You have to understand the physiology, you have to understand the morphology, the imaging, the proper techniques, and so forth. Let's look at simple approach. A single stent will almost always suffice when هدول الحالات اللي بيقول لك single stent strategy or provisional stenting if left main. The circumflex is small. The Medina classification is XX0 or 110 when there is disease of left main and LED and the left circumflex is not diseased. Either the LED or circumflex is diseased. Any osteal LED or circumflex disease is short. What do we mean by short? We mean by short, less than 10 millimeter in length. Had extreme criteria to suggest that one stent strategy is very helpful in these patients. More than 80% of left main bifurcation lesion can be treated with a single stent strategy. يعني مش ضروري إن كل left main تحط له two stents. معظمهم, at least two thirds to 80%, they can be treated with one stent strategy. The data is very clear. This data about single stent strategy versus double stent strategy in the LAD and the left circle, left main. In the LAD, the risk is double. However, in the left main, is about five times more. So you always should avoid two stent strategy in the left main in particular, in bifurcation in general, but in left main in particular, because the risk of free stenosis in particular, is extremely high with two stent strategy. And if you have that, you have to do two stent strategy. We'll show some of those cases. But a lot of cases, 80%, they can be treated with a single stent strategy. Let's talk about bare metal stent versus drug eluting stent. Maybe there's no value for this slide, but it is very important to mention. 
المعظم بيستعمل دراج اليورينج ستنس ما حدش بيستعمل هلا في الوقت الحاضر بير ميتال ستنس بس اتس فيري امبورتنت تو لوك ات ذا داتا اند ذا ريكومنديشن دراج اليورينج ستنس از ريكومنديد ابروتش فور بايفوركيشن بي سي اي سايزد اكوردنج تو ذا ديستال فيسل ريفرنس دايمتر يعني ال اي دي اور ذا سيركمفلكس اف ذا ديزيز ان ذا سيركمفلكس ويوجوالي دراج اليورينج ستنس when you have bare metal stent you can use it carefully with a yellow line but just to use it in the main stent main vessel not use it in the side branch and your strategy is provisional stenting single stent strategy this is the only time you can use bare metal stents you should avoid bare metal stents in both the main branch and the side branch It is a no-no. You know that your risk of restenosis is extremely high and you should not be used. As I mentioned, this is probably not valid by current standard, but we have to go through the guidelines for us to understand. Stent optimization technique. Khalil Ahki, what do we mean by optimization technique? Optimization, you know that the stent or the vessel is tapering. LAD or the left circumflex is smaller than the left main. So you size to the side branch, which, uh, whether it is an uh, LAD or a circumflex, and the left main is larger, so you have to optimization. Proximal optimization technique, POT. POT should be routinely performed with short non-compliant balloon to correct for stent oversizing in the proximal main branch. Undersizing. And if it hot stent only 3 millimeter, but like left main 4, so you should take a short non-compliant balloon to optimize the left main according to the proper size. For kissing balloon intervention, two non-compliant balloons are recommended sized according to the side branch. Simultaneous kissing balloon inflation, which size it to the LED and the circumflex, and you use simultaneous balloon inflation. And double inflation is better than single inflation. And it's our well, kissing balloon, you rest the patient and you do another kissing balloon. This data is better than just doing single uh, simultaneous kissing balloon inflation. After you do your simultaneous kissing balloon, you go back and do the pot, op proximal optimization technique. These are routine steps that we use in the left main intervention. Now, pot side pot. If you don't want to use simultaneous, you can use pot side pot. Keep yani. It's so optimization of the main branch. Take a side branch balloon. It's a will of dilatation, and then you go back to the main branch pot. It is acceptable as long as you have side branch is not severely diseased after that. But we prefer always to have kissing balloon and then followed by pot. But it is acceptable. Now, it is not recommended to post dilate the main branch stem distally to the carina with the balloon sized according to the proximal main branch. كيف يعني؟ بتقول انا سويت بالون بال LED 3 ملم، بدي اخذ بات اللي هو بالون اسوي المين برانش 4 ملم. You should not have that balloon protruding beyond the carina of the bifurcation. Otherwise you will end up with distortion of the main branch and maybe dissection perforation of the main branch, the side branch اللي هو LED اللي stented side branch. And it will compromise also the side branch. Now, routine kissing balloon inflation is not recommended in a single stent strategy. هلا في عندك مريض عنده LAD وعنده سيركمف عنده left main. وبدك تسوي له left main to LAD. And you know that the circumflex is not diseased, is free of disease. Routine side branch ballooning after main branch stenting and butt technique. وضل عندك السيركمفلكس فاتح وما فيش compromise. You should not do it. It's absolutely acceptable not to cross it back and to do balloon dilatation. So, uh, long distance, how can you, can you use long distance? Of course. You can use as, uh, as long as you know the properties of the stent. If you want to use a stent long, which is 38, to cover a long LED and left main, you should use a stent that you, can, you know that it can expand to the left main it's size. I meant only one of these stent, it doesn't expand, and I would dare to stretch it. You distort the stent, you distort the coating, and you distort the drug eluting of the stent. So you did not do the patient any favor. Understanding the property of the stent itself is very important to, to know. One more question about the stents. You know, the metal stents, less thrombosis uh, tendency than BES. 
هذا كان بالزمنات هلا في الوقت الحاضر وي نو ذات دراج كوتد ستنس ذا سكند اند ثيرد جينيريشن ار هاف ذي هاف ليس ستنت ثرومبوسيس كومبيرد تو ذا اوريجينال ذير ميتال ستنس ذات وي يوز تو دو سو ذا ستنت ثرومبوسيس ايشو از نوت فاليد اني مور هلا بنعطيهم عشان دوريشن اوف انتي بليتلت ديول انتي بليتلت اند وي هاف ناو نيو ستنس نيو جينيريشن اند ديفرنت ديزاين ستنس ذات يو كان يوز ا شورتر دوريشن اوف ديول انتي بليتلت ثيرابي So, in fact, the issue of bare metal stents is obsolete at this time. خلينا نحكي عن two stent strategy. If you want to use two stent strategy, what should be the technical approach to this? T stenting and tap stenting is recommended in bifurcation with wide angle. لما يكون عندك الانجل أكثر من 70 degrees, which is usually the left main bifurcation, you use either T stenting or tap technique. Now, if bifurcation angle is smaller than less than 70, either collot or DK crush technique can be used while considering side branch stenting first in case of side branch dissection or difficulty access. ليش نحكي هاي الشغلات؟ انت عادة لما يكون عندك بدك تستعمل two stent strategies، يكون disease بالmain branch بالLAD وبالleft circumflex. So you have to do dilatation of both. So your stent strategy should be planned very carefully. إذا عندك سايد برانش دايسكشن يو ستارت وذ سايد برانش بتخليهوش بعد ما تسوي المين برانش بدك تسحب الواير وتعود تو وايرنج يو مي نوت بي ابل تو جيت اكسس فان هاد في هذول الحالات يوجولي ان جنرال بنستعمل يا كلوت يا دي كي كراش اور اف ذا انجل از وايد مور ذان 70 يو كان يوز تي اور تاب اور موديفاي كراينا تكنيك ويتش از تكنيك اي يوز ا لوت هلا في عندك Yellow, which could be used with two stent technique, stent delivery balloons may be used for final kissing balloon inflation. يعني حطيت stent بال بال LED to the left main, three millimeter. وحطيت two seven five بال circumflex. Their balloons اللي سويت delivery بال stent تبعتهم, you can use it for kissing balloon inflation. بس لازم تسوي proximal optimization with a larger stent balloon. That it is confined to the main branch, to the left main. Proper sizing to the left main. إيش مش لازم نسوي؟ When performing two stent bifurcational PCI, final kissing balloon inflation should not be omitted. Diamond, diamond, diamond. لما نك تحوي two stent strategies, you should always end up with kissing balloon. يعني لما بسويش kissing balloon after two stent strategy, you kill the patient. If not immediately, in the future. If you don't want to do kissing balloon inflation after two stent strategy, don't use two stent strategies. Start with. You have to do kissing balloon inflation. طيب خلينا نحكي عن summary of what we mentioned here. Married and of left main bifurcation. You wire the main branch and you wire the side branch. You balloon. You put your stent in the main branch into the LED or the circumflex. You do, but if your side branch is compromised, you rewire the side branch. اللي هي هذه الحالة تكون ممكن تكون the circumflex. هلا الوايرنج في ناس تسحب الواير تبع ال LED وبتحطه بال circumflex وبتحط واير جديد بال LED. It's really preference. And I usually do but and use the wire, the free wire, to wire the side branch. It doesn't have to be the wire that you used for the. Stent delivery. Then wiring. If you want to use T stenting, you wire distal struts. If you want to use collot, you can do the proximal struts. فهاي لما نكسوي بعديها بصير kissing balloon, simultaneous kissing balloon, and then followed by part. These are the summary of single stent strategy in left main. Question. هاي سوينا main branch stenting sizing according to the distal main branch diameter usually the LED followed by part technique هلا وجدت انه the result obtained of the side branch is acceptable keep it open principle you don't have to do anything else is the main branch after main branch stenting and part technique the side branch is wide open and there's no compromise of the flow you don't have to do anything however if you have jailed side branch Deserving further intervention, 
you do side branch rewiring, aim at achieving achievement of distal rewiring. Side branch dilatation and kissing balloon inflation. Side branch dilatation with kissing balloon followed by repot. And side branch dilatation with side branch followed by repot and sometimes stenting. Side branch result after ballooning is not acceptable. You do side bailout stenting. You, confer, you change your strategy from single balloon strategy, single stent strategy into two stent strategies. These are the steps. So main branch, you part. If the side branch is okay, you are done. If the side branch is compromised, there's no flow or decreasing in the flow or the severe stenosis, you rewire and do balloon. If the balloon is acceptable, it's done. If the balloon is not acceptable, you change it to two stent strategy. What are the two stent strategies that we have? We have two stent strategy that we call it T stenting. And in this case, you wire distal struts of the side branch and you change that single strategy to T stenting. If you want a different technique, tab or clute, you rewire into the proximal struts of the side branch because that has a clinical significance about coverage of the ostium of the side branch. هلا معرفة البالون تبعك وال edges تبعته والwings تبعته بتساعدنا كتير where to position your balloon particularly if you want to cover the very proximal part of the stent. هلا دول different different kinds of balloon في بعضهم conical في بعضهم round في بعضهم the usual that we use track. So in track you use have the this is where you will position your proximal uh, uh, balloon in uh, relation to the stent. Others, you have to position it at the distal marker. Some of them, they position it in the middle of the marker. And all the technical issues, all the availability of the stent vis, you can tell that the stent will expand it, will need further intervention, and so forth. Let's talk about two stent strategy from the beginning. Bifurcation and lesion with extensive atherosclerotic involvement of both main branch and an important side branch. No risk of losing the side branch after the main branch stenting. You start with the main branch stenting followed by bland side branch implantation. So we LED, for into the left circumflex, but so we part, but then it's with so we balloon, and if the balloon doesn't work, you end up transforming it into tap or colloid. This is after you plant your main branch intervention. Major concern regarding the side branch after main branch stenting, you to start with DK crush in the beginning. with DK crush in the beginning. You stent the side branch and then you stent the main branch and you end up with kissing balloon inflation. Or if you have inverse main branch stenting across the side branch, you start with side branch stenting, and then you followed it with the inverse technique, inverse clot, inverse uh, T-stenting, or inverse step. I don't know if have technical uh, te techniques that needs a lot of careful uh, follow-up. أنا بحكي إنه كل واحد should adopt one main strategy for left main stenting. And then he use that in about 60-70% of all left main bifurcations. And then he use special techniques specific for selected group of patients. Leish. Then once you are proficient in one stent strategy or one PCI strategy, you can call one stent, call two stent strategy, you become really routinely aware and performing it better and perfectioning it better. هلا في بعض الحالات بتزبط فيها الروتين. سواء تي ستنتينج ولا موديفايد كراينا تكنيك ولا الكولات ولا دي كي كراش تكنيكس ما بزبط فيها. So you have to know all of them, but they usually use in a selected group and small number of patients. خلينا نحكي على دي كي كراش. دي كي كراش is gaining momentum. Lately, particularly in left main stenting, because of data which I kind of good data, but they are not really excellent data. This is one center uh, data that suggested that the main two stent strategy in left main should be DK crush. 
uh, it's a moderate number of patients, single center, so I think that you need much more data to adopt that. But in general, it's a good technique to know about. طلعوا على left main. They looked at the left main and they looked at it as a simple lesion. Keep simple lesion. You have the disease involving the left main, the side branch, and the side branch one. But it is shorter than 10 millimeter, and the diameter stenosis is usually about 50 to 70 percent. So these are we consider it as simple lesion. Difficult lesion, usually long lesion, diameter much more than 70 percent, and it's much more diffuse multiple bifurcation, thrombus containing, main vessel re reference diameter less than 2.5. كل هذول الكرايتيريا بتخليها كومبلكس ليجن. خلينا نطلع على الديكي كراش بالسيمبل ليجن versus provisional stenting. Look at one year target lesion failure is provisional stenting 8% and 4% DK crush. And a small number of patients, probably there is no much difference. Maybe there is some bias into that, but I think you know, it's helpful to know these information. And this does not reach statistical significance. However, it's become more important when there is a complex lesion. Long lesion, heavily calcified, diffuse atherosclerosis, and all these criteria. Honey can refer to the DK crush with provisional standing. Provisional standing TLIR was 18% compared to 7% in the DK crush. So maybe a technique that you should know about, you should consider it in selected group of patients. في عندنا وقت لبعض الحالات؟ يا يا اوكي. First case 56 year old male is a smoker, hypertension, and he's complaining of exertional angina. Echo, mild apical hypokinesis, and stress test positive for angina and ischemia. شو بتتوقع عنده؟ ال دي يعني احنا لما سوينا الفحوصات وطلع من العياده توقعنا انه يكون ال دي طلع شو طلع لنا؟ This is the first angiogram شو رايك؟ ما ضلش ال دي ايه ما ضلش ال دي طيب شو تسوي؟ تايت ليفت مين توتال ال دي ال دي متوقعه ليفت مين اجتنا على البيعه طيب اقول لكم شو سوينا أنا لما فحصت المريض بالعيادة ما توقعت أنه عنده ليفت مين، لا صار عنده هاي بوتنشن ولا صار عنده سيفير ليفت مين فيتشرز كونسيستنت وذ ليفت مين بالستريس تيست، فقلت يمكن هذه الليفت مين از ريلي نوت ترو ليفت مين ديزيز. خلينا نسوي شيء ثاني. انترا كورونيرو نايترو جليسرين. شو رأيك؟ So this is what I call proper diagnosis of these patients. I tell من left main LAD. It's a routine strategy of left main LAD uh, BCI. But at least we did not have to change our strategy. We did not send him to surgery unnecessarily, and we avoided if we want to do PCI to do left main bifurcational PCI. Nitroglycerin or vasodilators in general are extremely important, not only in the interventional techniques but in the diagnostic techniques يعني مش الوقت هلا نحكي عن سبازم and proper sizing and proper imaging about utilization of vasodilator but انا بحكي اي كات لاب بيستعملش vasodilators routinely in all cases even the diagnostic cases is it suboptimal you always have to have vasodilator and given a proper dosing to avoid Overdiagnosis, underdiagnosis, improper sizing, and so forth. So this is one example that you can avoid uh, unnecessary technique or unnecessary operation for a patient who clearly have a single cell, uh, single uh, vessel disease. Num case number two. Sixty-five year old. He's only smoker. Severe progressive angina. Stress test early positive with hypotension. شو بتتوقع؟ الاوريجين اوف ذا ليفت مين لوكس ريلي سيفيرلي ديزيز، از ات سبازم؟ از ات ترو؟ يعني لما يكون عندك بروبر ايفالويشن بالاول وعندك هايبوتنشن اند سيفير اسكيميا اون ستريس تيست، ذيس از ريلي 
ثرو ليفت مين بس برضه احنا ما بنتركها هيك وي دو نيتروجليسرين وي دو فيزو دايليترز فيري كيرفولي بارتيكولارلي هذا المريض ما عنده شيء رايت ات از نون دومينانت رايت فافتر ايفن نيتروجليسرين اند فيزو دايليترز هي مينتيند هيز سيفيريتي اوف ذا ليفت مين سو واتس ذا بيست ستراتيجي بهذا المريض هذا اوستيال ليفت مين ديزيز سنجل سنتر سنجل سنتر وين بدك تحطها؟ بال LED كومبلكس بال جاست ليفت مين طيب اذا عندك ستنت ذات ات ويل ريلي سايز تو ذا ليفت مين اي ثينك ات ميك سنس دايركت ستنتينج وي ديد نوت سي كالسيوم از يو وي جاست ديد دايركت ستنتينج اوف ذا ليفت مين بروبر اتس سيلف And we have excellent results. We have a follow-up angiogram on this patient, and he's doing great. Had it so what the hal of the 10 years old, probably. Case number three. Ahmed, don't you think in these cases, when when you are not 100% sure an IBUS is better than such a case? For diagnosis? Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
balloon inflation, post balloon, then you put your stent position. And this is iliocranial. It's really good view in this particular patient. You see the calcium here, and you have this upper stent is matching into the upper uh, wall of the left main because it is shorter in the lower uh, wall of the left main. So you have to cover it properly and maybe one strut into the uh, aorta. So this is what we did, sent implantation, pot technique using a large balloon here into the left main, avoiding crossing into the carina. And this is before. And this is after, wide left main into the LAD. The left circumflex was not compromised. There's no stenosis. So we did not even touch it. We did not even rewire it. So here the plush and the venous flow is not compromised. It is completely normal. Case number four, 65 year old male patient, diabetic and smoker, presented with an acute coronary syndrome. Eco anteroepical hypokinesis, ejection fraction 35%. Take him to the cath lab. Show Ryak. Halmin Mutabarain. Quadrification. Quadrification. So you have the LED, you have the ramus, you have the left circumflex, and the marginal. It's like four branches of the left main. Should I come? After offering hand surgery, and after he refuses. Should that say we know? Recently. Okay. Few details on this patient. This was a stroke that he absolutely refused their surgery. His ejection fraction 35%. He was completely unstable. Acute coronary syndrome, dynamic ECG changes. So we offered him surgery, but apparently he refused. So this is what we did. This is, these are more views. And what makes it worse is that the right coronary artery is not a huge artery. It's a kind of co-dominant. Revascularization, cabbage or PCI. If you select PCI, provisional stenting or two stenting, انسى الكابج هلا جراحين راح يلومونا هلا بس يعني 1 or 2 stent at least 2 طيب يمكن لازم نزيد العدد بس شبكات طيب devices I'll go through some of the technique or the issues that we prepare in this particular case we selected 7 French and we used JL because we don't want to engage deep into the left main with EBU or implants so you have to be very careful. Otherwise, the patient will have major hemodynamic compromise. Uh, guide wire, workhorse guide wire. We should avoid really traumatic guide wires like uh, hydrophilic wires because they can cause dissection without knowing. Predilatation, long balloons. Don't use short balloons in when you have critical lesions. Get them ready on the wire because when you cross, the patient may really deteriorates. You have to you have to your wire ready. Before you cross with the wire, your balloon should be at the tip of or close to the tip of the guide. So once you wire, you just do your balloon. Quick inflation. Don't use short balloons. Use long balloons. Undersize is good because you don't really need to compromise say, the side branch. So get it ready. Temporary pacemaker, sometimes they are helpful because sometimes you end up with bradycardia. Intraortic balloon bump, we don't use intraortic balloon bump, even in these cases. We get it just standby in case we need it. And FFR, you don't need it. <coughs> IVUS, you don't need it. So this is the strategy, wire into the LED, wire into the circumflex. You see, just the wire in here, your flow is really compromised into the LED. In balloon, jahaz. This is after balloon inflation. The flow is better, the lesion is less. And then we selected two stent strategy. And in this case, we selected modified carina technique, or other people, they call it TAP. 
we selected to go from the left main into the LED, and you see the stent is compromising the flow, so you have to be really quick. And we ignored the ramus, it's not really a harsh vessel, and we went from the circumflex to the marginal rather than from the circumflex proper, because the marginal is a larger vessel, it has a disease here. So we inflated the circumflex, then you deploy your left main after pulling your wire here. What's next? I have two stents. Results? No further interventions? Is it acceptable? You have to recross. When you have two stents strategy, you have to end up with kissing balloon inflation. There's no way you can do it. Part of the proximal left main, of course, necessary. Kissing balloon is necessary. So these are B and C are the correct answers here. So these are kissing balloon inflation. We did part, and these are the results before and after. This is the before, and this is the after. The ray must remain open, and this is the second bifurcation of the marginal and the left circumflex, and in open, you don't have to cross it back again. This is the epicranial view, and this is after the two stent strategy. Widely open. There is some disease here, but it's not really a major problem for this patient. Two stent strategy. Kissing balloon inflation is a must. Part is a must. Case number five. Yeah. 67, male, smoker, diabetic, hypertension, severe COPD, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, severe crescendo angina, is hypoxic. Despite his being hypoxic, but harakshi, but he has severe angina. Why? I don't know. Because he's coming to us. Echo, normal ejection fraction. He has severe pulmonary hypertension. Non-dominant right, subtotal LED. Yeah, left main. What are you doing? Kavish? عدنان تأخذ لك مريض زي هذا سيفير بالمنع هيبرتنشن بالمنع فيبروسيز هايبوكسيك طيب خلاص طيب بي سي اي بروفيشنال ستنتينج تو ستنت استراتيجي ايش بدكم؟ مور فيوز طيب ماشي ديفايسز you saw that this is really heavily calcified. <coughs> Left main. Uh, okay. Devices, guiding catheter, seven French, the same thing is JL. You don't want to use aggressive catheters. Guide wire, coarse wire, BMW, etc., and so forth. IVUS is helpful in these cases. Had a fish angle, the left main. Right is non dominant. يعني في هذا الحالات إحنا نستعمل IVUS. نستعمل شيء IVUS في 90 plus percent of left main. We use it just very selectively. Rotational atherectomy, I think it's a must in this patient. Temporary base maker is a must. Intraoperative balloon pump, no. We don't use it. We keep it on the side. Embella device, we don't use it. We don't have it. FFR. Yani, the patient comes and says, "I have severe angina despite hypoxia." Inshallah, that's it. Let's talk about the value of IVAS in this patient. You find calcium is 360 degrees. It's really you cannot dilate it without rotation of the tectomy. IVAS. Helpful in sizing in this particular patient. I know left main is very short, heavily calcified. You don't know the size. And it's also in confirming whether rotational atherectomy is really necessary or not. So this is rotational atherectomy. The larger vessel is the circumflex. So we selected to wire into the circumflex, do rotational atherectomy, then do dilatation of the left main. And this is both dilatation, recoil is significant, but you know that the balloon is dilated, so you can put your stent after that. If the balloon is not dilated, you upsize your roto size. This is what we selected, as we mentioned. You have main branch, 
we selected to put our stent into the left main to the circumflex because it's the larger vessel. We do use different views to cover the ostium, proper ostium. And then after implantation of the stent, we did part, which is a larger vessel. And this is what we ended up. This is left circumflex stent into the, into the left main, proper sizing of the left side circumflex and into the left main. And this is the final results. Acceptable? What's next? يعني أنا أحكي لكم صراحة إذا عندي مريض بحط له ستنت من اللفت مين لل L A D if the circumflex is not compromised I usually don't do stent kissing balloon of the left of the left circumflex particularly if it's not really dominant vessel. بس مريض حطيت له ستنت من اللفت مين لل circumflex I have to end up with a kissing balloon. L A D is extremely important. على كيسينج بالون ان كي ان ذا اذر وي راوند لما انك تحط من الليفت مين للسر للال اي دي از ا سيرك نوت هيوج نوت دومينانت اند ذير از نو كومبرومايز نو ستينوزيز اي دونت دو كيسينج بالون فهادي انا اي دونت ثينك ذيس از اكسبتبل ذا ريزلت بريفيوس لوكس انجيوغرافيكالي جود بت اي دونت ثينك اتس اكسبتبل سو كيسينج بارت اي فيس اول اوف اباف وي ديد اول اوف ذا اباف هي هاز اونلي ليفت مين Anything happened to that, this guy is dead. So this is what we use, kissing balloon from left main into the LAD, left main circumflex. We re of the proximal left main. We used IVUS. We made sure that he has a proper sizing into the left circumflex, proper sizing of the left main, and excellent results, and also the LAD. So this is how we treated this particular patient using IVUS, and as I mentioned, we don't use it routinely, we use it selectively. So this is the final results. Proper sizing, proper inflation. We did not put two stent strategy. We avoided a stent into the LED. There's no point to putting in that. So this is one example. You can end up putting a stent from left main circumflex and just ballooning of the LED. Doesn't have to be always a stent. I think this is the last case. 90 years old male, no significant past medical history, recurrent acute coronary syndrome complicated by cardiogenic. هذا المريض أول مرة بدخل المستشفى 90 سنة. كل ما يصير عنده chest pain, huge ST depression, cardiogenic shock. بدخل على ال ventilator. هذا هذا 20 سنة هذا أول من أول حالات left main that I did. خلينا نشوف the right was total. And this is his left main. انبسطنا والله الفيسلز كويسين وكويسين للكبج بعد ما صحي وشلناه من الفنتليتر قلنا له ممتاز والله لقينا لك حل قال شو الحل؟ قلنا له بدنا نسوي كبج هذا الامريكان كنت فيها بشتغل بجونز هابكنز فقال لي سان عمر 90 سنه وانا كان مكبر قد ابن ابنه قال لي سان يو نو How many times I have been to the, to the hospital? I said, no, I don't know. I said, this is the first time. I'm not going to do surgery. It's a matter of fact. There's no pain. There's no pain. In those days, in the 20th century, we didn't do the left main in a routine. We didn't do the non-protected left main, simple left mains. But not one has a total right cardiogenic shock. And the collaterals on the right one is a part of the circumflex وعنده ستراتشر ليجن المهم قلنا له طب فكر بالموضوع المساء ذا سيم اتاك اكيوت كورنر سندروم كارديجينيك شوك بالفنتليتر حكينا مع اهله قال لا هو هناك بتقدرش تحكي مع الاهل يسووا اللي بدهم اياه الاهل لازم هو بعد ما صحي نفس الشيء قلنا له ها اقتنعت قال اقتنعت انه مش راح اسوي شيء واحد اني anyway, واي so what do you do for this patient In particular, I call it a different kiss. What is the different kiss? I just wired into the LED. I just implanted a short stent into the carina. ما دخلت لا بال LED ولا بال circumflex. And inflated three minutes, and I went out. Excellent results. 
مريض هيموديناميكلي ستيبل وي هاد ا بيس ميكر ستاند باي ات ات فانتاستيك روع على المريض وبعديها بسنتين ثلاثه يضل يجي لعندي على ما رجيت على هون سو ذيس از وات وي كول ا ديفرنت كيس وات از ذا ديفرنت كيس كيب ات ستوبيدلي سمبل يعني بعض الحالات يو دونت ريلي تو بي فانسي وتسوي لي بايفوركيشن ورايح وجاي خمس ساعات بالكاث لاب Sometimes simple kiss or kiss, different kind of a kiss, is the best strategy and gets you out of trouble very soon. So this is, uh, thank you very much for uh, being here.